Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Adrian Gosbell here. Um, can someone just reply back in chat to say that they can hear us okay, or hear me okay, please? I can't even see chat at the moment. That's another story. Yeah, Nico can. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's always responding. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so um, this is our first webinar session for uh, um, 2017, and this particular lecture is going to be about Uniface Mobile. So uh, Jason Huggins, who is uh, responsible for most of the customer-facing technical parts of our business, is also a expert techie in his own right who's going to be giving us this session. A uh, combination of PowerPoint and also some demos. Now, uh, we did have a few issues this morning with the demos, so fingers crossed it all goes really well today. Um, as is usual with these sessions, um, feel free to uh, ask any questions whilst this is going on via the chat. We have a couple of us here that is monitoring the chat and can hopefully answer the questions there and then. Uh, after the event, feel free to get into uniface.info and ask any questions about Uniface and mobile uh, online on uniface.info. It's often monitored or regularly monitored and we can pick those calls up pretty quickly. And I'll hand over to Jason. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Um, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Jason Huggins, and as Adrian says, I'm the director of the delivery organization of Uniface. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, mobile development, and particularly deployment in Uniface. Okay, so the high level agenda I'll talk about our vision for the product and why we've done it, the solution, and then I'll show you a demo of it in action. Okay, so why have we built this solution? Um, the core reasons were to bring the powers of Uniface to mobile devices, allowing you to bring the enterprise to the mobile quickly and easily. Um, as with all of our developments in Uniface being a low-code solution, it's about allowing businesses to innovate and deliver solutions quickly rather than focusing on the technical complexity. We encapsulate that and make it easy for you to deliver solutions. We've been in the industry for a long time. A number of people use the solution successfully and have had stability and good products for a long period of time. And mobile, it's the big thing at the moment, and we need to bring Uniface to mobile. Again, as I mentioned, longevity and stability are core to our beliefs. Um, we don't want to provide a solution where you'll have to rewrite over and over again. It has to be highly scalable, and we know that this is always focused on mission-critical applications, so it's core to making sure you could reuse the power of Uniface on mobile. Okay, so for many of us just um, embarking on mobile solutions, um, it's sometimes difficult to picture what it is we need to deliver. We all have, or many of us have smartphones and use them daily, but when we look at what we do ourselves, it's hard to think, what in my solution could form part of um, a mobile application? Now, Forrester Research came up with a concept called Mobile Moments, and here's a quote from them. I'm not going to read it to you. Um, my interpretation of this is basically saying, look for that one action that you can do really well that solves an immediate need when you're maybe away from your laptop. So an example of that would be when I'm on the road and one of my um, uh, employees requests a holiday, I'll get a notification and on my device I just click approve or deny. I don't have to mess around booting up my laptop or logging on, on a website or anything like that. It's just there, here and now, and so I'm extremely productive. I can just click a button, job done. For any of you that travel often, you probably find yourself uh, these days just checking into your flights um, on your mobile device and even having your uh, boarding pass on a mobile device. So you're no longer messing about with paper, and if you're not checking bags in, you're not even having to go to the service desk at the airport. So they're simple actions, uh, but bring a lot of benefit. The key thing here is we're not looking to take the entire enterprise application and the back office systems. We're looking for those key use cases that will enhance the delivery and the productivity of those people using the solutions. 
So how have we done this? <coughs> there were a number of technical challenges we had to think about in how we um, build the mobile solutions. Um, you have two ends of the spectrum. The first being uh, native application development, where you're using the SDKs and the development toolkits of the native devices to build those solutions. It has its pros and cons. The other end of the spectrum is just to build mobile facing websites, again with its pros and cons. If I'm using the native functionality of the device, I have full access to the device functionality. So whether I'm talking about the camera, the barometer, the gyroscopes, locations, you name it, I have access to it. On the other hand, if I'm just doing a mobile website, because browsers by definition are sandboxed for security, I don't have access to the underlying device functionality. Another technical challenge that had to be considered was device fragmentation. Whether we're talking about Apple devices or Google devices, there's a lot of differences, a lot of variances, different form factors, different functionality, different memory, point after point after point. So many things to consider. Each of these differences potentially leads to a different code line. And when you're talking about the millions and millions of devices out there and the hundreds of thousands of variants, then you don't want to be having a code line for each of those. So that was another challenge we needed to consider. Again, being Uniface, we've always had the ethos of develop once, deploy anywhere, so cross-platform and development with one code line. So that's something we had to take into consideration. Mobiles, by definition, are quite different to your normal desktop PCs or servers in terms of deployment, and that itself can also be a challenge. So that's something I'll also talk about as we move forwards. Okay, so our solution, as I mentioned, is to continue the Uniface ethos of allowing you to develop and deploy your cross-platform apps. And a phrase what I have in there is responsive apps. It was important for us to allow you to build responsive apps because a mobile device, even if you're just on, say, a phone or a tablet, can be in either orientation. You can have it in landscape mode or you can have it in portrait mode. So you need to be able to respond to the changes in um, orientation. And also, the differences between deploying on a tablet versus a phone. You have a very different screen size, a different pixel density, etc., etc. And so, again, it needed to be able to respond to, um, to that. And what we've done is taken a hybrid approach. Now, by hybrid, I mean take the best of both worlds. We're using stand industry standard technologies, such as HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS, to allow us to build the responsive apps. Um, however, those are just web technologies, and we needed to be able to access the device functionality. So around that, we have a wrapper that allows you to access the underlying device functionality. Now, the good thing is, we take care of that wrapper. So in terms of what you're building in Uniface, for those who are already doing web development, you're just reusing your existing assets and your existing knowledge by delivering DSP solutions and building DSPs. And what I'll do later on is show you how you take those DSP solutions um, to the mobile. Again, with Uniface, all of this can be done with rapid prototyping and development, and I'll show you the build process as we go through this presentation. Okay, so here's an overview of the mobile development and build process, and it's a pseudo-complex diagram. Uh, what we see on the left-hand side is the Uniface development part of the process, and what we see on the right-hand side is the build process. Now, to simplify this massively, I can say the Uniface build process, which is our Uniface app factory, you can just ignore that. It's that simple. We do it for you. You click a button, and you get your application. So it is a nice complicated diagram of all the different things that build your solution, but you can ignore it. Just click build. What you will be doing on the left-hand side is just using the Uniface development environment, as you always have, building DSP solutions with the small addition of the mobile startup shell. We've kept things familiar and common to the way you've always worked in Uniface, i.e. you build your solution and you create a startup shell. Mobile is no different. 
you build your solution and you create a startup shell. So what does that actually look like, technically speaking? Okay, before we get into the actual Uniface parts, there's a couple of prerequisites. If you are doing development um, for Android and iOS, then you are going to need a Google developer account and an Apple um, developer account as well. Part of that will involve creating for Google a key store, and the key store is basically a container for your certificates that allow you to sign your applications, basically giving them an identity and um, allowing people to say, yeah, this has definitely come from a particular vendor. So it's just like a signature. Um, with Apple, you have the same things. You have certificates, application identities, and provisioning profiles. And again, that all com combines to form part of the signing profile and the build process. So once you have those prerequisites in place, you can start your development. Now, as I've said, it is DSP development. DSPs are brilliant, give us a load of functionality for the web, hide the complexity and make it easy, and that's what you use for mobile. Now, there have been some enhancements to uh, make mobile development easy. Um, part of this is the cross-platform layouts. Now, these are conceptually very basic helpers, i.e., allowing you to have containers for the header, the main body content, and the footer. However, the implementation itself can be tricky. The reason for that is because of the device fragmentation, the different ways browsers interpret things, um, and different orientations, etc., etc. It can be complex, but we've dealt with that for you. All you have to do is have your container areas, maybe specified by divs, and add the attributes of data, uniface role, and specify the areas as header, content, or footer. You can control the styling of those containers with um, three standard classes from uniface, and those are UF header, UF content, and UF footer. Um, no prizes for guessing which one relates to which role. As well as those enhancements to DSPs, um, we have the Previewer app, and this allows you to do um, rapid prototyping and rapid testing without actually physically having to build um, the Uniface app and deploy it. Um, there is a limitation to that, and I'll talk about that when we discuss plugins. We've added the startup shell, and we'll see that as we move forwards, and then I'll talk about plugins. Okay, so the mobile startup shell, um, this is the main addition around mobile applications, and this is what allows us to create the hybrid application. The mobile startup shell basically defines the properties of your mobile app, and it allows you to specify things such as the application name, the application version, the application ID, um, and then which plugins you're using. Plugins are what are used to give you access to the underlying device functionality, whether that be the barometer, um, the barcode scanner, location services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, those are both standard plugins which we verified and support, and you can also have custom plugins. As well as that, the startup shell allows you to specify um, a set of resources. And these are used to specify your icons and your splash screens. We'll talk about that more as we move forwards. Um, the difference between these startup shells and, say, a Uniface um, desktop application or use server web application startup shell is that the startup shell itself is not actually compiled and there's no APS file generated. Technical detail doesn't really matter, but just something to be aware of. What is different is that there is a build button, and when you click that, it packages up everything, defines what's required for the um, native wrapper, and builds it for you. It sends it to our build service, so the Uniface app factory, and once it's built, that built app is returned to you, and you can install it on your device. Um, the other option is publish it in one of the app stores. So I talked about plugins. Um, these come in two forms. There's the standard plugins that we support. And if you go to Uniface download, uh, unifaceinfo.com and look at the downloads, you'll see that we have a mobile availability matrix. So the MAM, 
It's a bit like the PAM, but it's specific to mobile. And in there, you'll see which iOS platforms we support, and which Android platforms we support, and for those platforms, which plugins we support. Now, if you go to the site uh, bitbucket.org, Uniface Mobile, you will see the list of supported plugins which we have cloned. The reason we've cloned those plugins and not just pointed at the original um, Git-based or uh, Bitbucket-based repositories is that we need to ensure stability uh, for you, the end users and developers. If we left you pointing towards the main trunk or the main branch, well, those are constantly under active development. And because that's outside of our direct control, if someone introduced a breaking change, there's a risk to your application. So what we do is clone the repositories, we test them, we verify them, and maintain them. As they're um, updated, we will continue to test, verify, maintain, and update our cloned versions. The key thing there is we will always ensure that the versions we clone will work and not introduce breaking changes or issues to your applications. So those will always be on the um, MAM, so the Mobile Availability Matrix, as our supported plugins. As well as that, phones have all sorts of functionality, uh, and we can't test and support everything straight away. So we also have the concept of custom plugins that allows you to pick additional plugins that you might find useful and need to add to your application. Now, we don't have direct control over those, but it's easy for you to integrate them. All you have to do is specify the Git repository, so you can see an example there of um, the PhoneGap plugin, um, plugin push. And in this example, it's a plugin that lets me do notifications, and I'll demonstrate this to you um, shortly. The plugins can be PhoneGap or Cordova plugins, which are one in the same, but when you're Googling or searching for them, yeah, you can search for either name, and you'll find uh, potentially different sets of plugins available to you. The other thing I mentioned you specify in the startup shell is the resources, and this can be the icons and splash screens. Now, um, we've created this wizard to simplify the process because the number of icons and that you need to um, create can be huge. In the screenshot, we can see the Android icons, and so we can see that there's four different um, launch icons, and that's basically to deal with different pixel densities and screen sizes. And then you can see, for a similar reason, different splash screens, again, catering for the um, different devices. Okay, that's eight files, but technically, you've got landscape and portrait, which increases the number of files. If we look at iOS, there's many, many, many more files to deal with. Now, the reason this is a challenge is because there's a very specific naming structure and a very specific uh, folder structure that these files have to go into when being built into an application. Um, that's not something we impose. That's just the way you build um, Android and iOS apps. So we've put this wizard in place to simply take away that complexity. For this, you can name your files anything you like, and you just point and click to those files for each one you want as a specific launch icon or splash screen, and we will take care of putting them into the appropriate folder structure um, and the correct naming. So once you've done all of that with the um, Uniface startup shell, you then have the Uniface app factory. So in the startup shell, you'll click the build environment, and that will package up everything, pull together the resources and definitions, and send it to our cloud environment to be built. Um, what this does and the benefits it brings are very key with a first point, and that's the build environment facilitation. From a Uniface point of view, you're just building your application as normal. You've just got your normal development environment, and you hit build. You don't have to have specific hardware, specific skill sets. You don't have to maintain specific SDKs or build services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just hit that one button in Uniface, and everything is taken care of for you. The other value add from um, the Uniface App Factory is that it deals with build and release management. 
you can probably imagine if you're doing a lot of mobile apps and a lot of versions and updates that you'd have many, many APK files. And to deal with those in a manual way and emailing them around and putting them on file servers can be a challenge. So what you'll see in my demonstration is one of the tools that's part of our build factory um, that help with this. Overall, this is a subscription service. Okay, so I'll now demonstrate some of this.